we've been teaching about inner healing and teaching about our feelings. If you don't learn to conquer your feelings, then you're just going to have an up and day, up, down, up one day and down the next. I want to say that again. Christ bought our salvation for us. That's fixed. If you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, I'm not talking about just saying it, but you did it with your heart. You, you um, confessed him as Lord and Savior, and you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You really believe that, then you're born again. The Holy Spirit moved in your life and caused you to be born again. And that's done for us. That's our position in Christ. But here's, we have a soul, we have a mind, we have a will, we have emotions, and we have a body. And when you get older, your body will give you trouble, and you'll have to know how to handle it. But your feelings, this is where the enemy will play, play with you, right in your feelings. Randy, why don't you come over here, if you don't mind, son, because uh, you can see better. And, all right, appreciate it. So what we've been talking about is feelings. Now, we're not saved by our feelings. If you feel bad, if you've given your life to Christ, and you feel bad tomorrow, are you still saved? Yes. How many uh, had their feelings uh, move this week from 1 to 10, up and down a little bit? Yeah. Uh, this, is, um, this is Wednesday night. Uh, last, uh, I think it was last Thursday, my dog died. And, and I was right here on number one. And he died. And I didn't go down too much because I, I had to put him down. I had to take him to the veterinarian. But I did go down to about three. But I kept thinking, he's always back there sleeping under the oak anyway. And I buried him under the oak tree. So what's changed? The only thing that's really changed, I don't have to go out there and feed him. But he's still out there under the oak tree. So I think of, oh, he's out there. He's doing fine. He's sleeping. He loves to sleep. So that helps me in my thinking. And, and now I'm pretty well up here in, in my feeling rim. Now, I want you to hear me and hear me good. This is where basically... Your problems will be in your feeling rim. Now, how many of you know when you do good or you think you do good, your number one is the highest, right? Number 10 is the lowest. Let's just say Randy sang this song tonight. And when he sat down in the chair, he was on one. But if he thinks he's done bad, he's down here number 10. How are we doing, Randy? <laughs> Where? Down. <laughs> Dig a hole. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? So is a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. I say you did good. All right. Eight. Look at there. See there? Watch Randy. Watch, it. Watch Randy's thing go whoop. Go right up there. You did good, son. I appreciate it. And, and we'll have you do that again. All right, everybody got their pamphlet. All right, there, there we are. Where does our problems come from? Many times our own sins. And uh, how many of you know a lot of people are committing suicide today? I mean thousands are committing suicide because they don't know how to handle their feelings. And that's serious. And if you've got kids, you've got to monitor them. You've got to every day see how your kid is doing and monitor them. And, uh, but... Now, we know as Christians, I want to say something. As Christians, if we sin, we know we go to 1 John 1, 9. Is that true? And who wants to quote that for me? Anybody? All right. The King James is the easiest. If we sin, that little word, if we sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? Now you're back, but suppose you did a sin, for example, years ago we dealt with this young woman, and she went out and committed uh, adultery. Well, her husband took her back, but she caught a disease that could not be cured, a sexual disease that could not be cured, and now she brought that back to her husband, and he caught it. Now, her sin was cleared as far as God's concerned, 
But she has to live with that, and he has to live with that all their time down here on the earth. So we need to look at sin. Yes, sin is fun for a what? Somebody say it. Season, but the end thereof is death. Yes, God will forgive us, but once you plant the seed, you might not like, or I might not like, what's going to come up. Hello? So we gotta, we got to get our minds renewed and realize that the devil is deceiving so many people today and, uh, and walk and trust the Lord to keep us out of sin. Now, the Bible says sin shall not have dominion over us. That doesn't mean we can't sin. You can sin anytime you want to. But count the cost. What's going to be the ripple effect? Okay? Uh, we want to remember that. Okay? Because we might not like the results of our sin. And all of God's people say, how many love me? You want me to butter it up a little bit? <laughs> Tell it like it is? Thank you. Appreciate it. Because I got to. Because I, done, I, I deal with too many people that it's so sad. So sad. Yes, I've dealt with people that uh, their children commit suicide, their husband commits suicide, their loved ones commit suicide. I have to deal with it as a pastor. So that's why i got to be honest and, and, and really... Really. But look at your pamphlets. So many of our sins come from ourselves. No wonder the guy had a rope around you. In other words, we're hanging ourselves. You see that picture? We are hanging ourselves if we think that we're not going to sow what we reap. No. Is that right? Huh? Correct me now. Reap what we sow. Well, the reason, I'm just checking you out, you know. Uh-huh. Caught you. Sleeping. One, two, three. All right. Got you. We will, <laughs> we will sow what we reap, right? Oh, I get that. Thank you. We reap what we sow. I get that thing straight. Now, Susan said, forget about the humor stuff. I'm trying. All right. Sins of our ancestors. A lot of times people have problems, and they keep falling in this particular sin, and they don't know why. You, sometimes you have to trace it back uh, three or four generations back to your ancestries. And we have found that, like many times, Go back three or four generations back, they got a divorce. The next generation got a divorce. The next generation got a divorce. And, this, and, your gener and you're about to get a divorce if some things don't change. And you look back, you say, hmm. Okay, and you had to do a little spiritual warf warfare and break that, that ancestor, uh, if you may want to call it spirit, okay? All right, there's a lot of teachings on a lot of this. I'm, I'm giving you a little skim here now. All right, there's sins of others. Sometimes you're in a problem today be, or you're suffering today because of the sins of other people. Okay? As a wife, you may suffer from the sins of your husband or a husband may suffer from the sins of, of your wife. So you've got to see that. Then spiritual warfare, uh, which involves the occult. A lot of people and ancestors have been involved in the occult. What is, what is Halloween? Is that the Mar Halloween? Now, we know, how many believes Halloween is a Christian holiday? Let's see your hands. No, it's not. Now, here's the way Susan and me did it with our kids. They stayed home, and we had candy and tracks. And when people came to the door, our kids would give them candy and give them tracks. We got a lot of tracks back there, how to get saved. So you can, you can use it for the glory of God. So remember that. Now, let me share a little something here that might help you tonight. And, uh, let me say that all of us have to face these problems. Preachers, elders, deacons, believers, I don't care who you are. How many of you know we all came from the same stump? And what's the name of that stump? Adam. Adam, yeah. Adam. <coughs> Number one, I'm going to put here, H-U-R-T, hurts or hurts. How many has ever been hurt? Mm -hmm. Now, 
you're not going to go through this life without being hurt. Let me bring you down to reality of life. Hello? Somebody say hello back. Hello. I know you're out there. Thank you. you, you face reality. There's the way things should be. Listen. But there's the way things are, and you've got to handle it the way it is. Okay? All right? So we've been hurt. Now, how you handle that hurt will depend on the degree of damage it will do to you. Let it sink in. How you handle that hurt. Now, I want to be honest, and I'm in the pot with you. Uh, even though I'm 80 years old, how many of you, how many of you know I've only been hurt one time? <laughs> Multiply that 80 times 80. <laughs> but I know how to handle her. Number one, I don't accept it. Number one, do you hear what I just said? Don't accept it. Your husband will hurt you. Your wife will hurt you. Your kids will hurt you. And if you're a pastor, the sheep will hurt you. And we don't mean to hurt each other, but some folks, see, haven't learned. They're saved, but they're weak in their faith, and they don't know nothing about life. So when they come in here, we have to teach them. We, you and me, all the teachers, have to teach them how to live the Christian life. Not that we, oh, I'm holier than you are holy. Forget about all that stuff. It's ridiculous. No, that we might rule and reign like God wants us to do. Rule and reign in life and, and help people grow and mature in the Lord and help people that need help. See, see God's a good God and, 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 and we are in, in his family and we are to help each other. See, as we move along. Now, if you, don't, if you do not handle that hurt, where did I put it? Praise God. Here it is. Your emotions can help you or hurt you bad. Anger is an is, is a, a emotion. It'll deal with your liver. If you're angry a lot, the chances are you're going to be damaging your liver, which, which damages your blood and all because it purifies your blood. Grief. It, there's a time to grieve. And sometimes you have to say, now, you've grieved for two years over that person that has passed away. You know they're in heaven. They're Christians. You need to stop that grieving because if you continue to grieve, it'll affect your lungs. Doctors are finding all of this out fondly. Worry. Make your hair grow, fall out. <laughs> stomach trouble. If you worry, a lot of stomach trouble. Stress. Guess what stress will do? Your heart and your brain. Fear, your kidneys. Fear will damage your kidneys. We'll stop there. I don't want to get you depressed. All right. Now, what happens if you don't deal with that hurt? then you're going to, later on, it might not, listen, it might not, it might not manifest until 10 years down the road. Are you following me? But it's there and working all the time. It might not manifest. In fact, a lot of things don't manifest in people until they get about 40 years old. How many 40 years old we have in here? Let's see, right past 40, you know. Okay. All right. Well, whatever you sowed way back yonder may begin to manifest in your life. Okay, that's encouraging. It? Oh, God's forgiven you, but you plant the seed. Hello? It can come up. That's why, that's why you have to do a little bit of spiritual warfare. That's why you've got to know how to even handle, and if that stuff starts manifesting, you can take authority over it and rebuke it and refuse it. And not, and not let it grow in your garden. Are you listening? It's up to us to not let it grow in our garden. How many of you know we are a garden? We are, our bodies are the temple of God, but we're also a garden. 
So what happens if you don't deal with it, that will lead to resentment. Now, let's stop. If you if you you got to identify how many went to school. Let's see your hands. Went to school. How many learned about cause and effect? Okay. For every cause, there is a effect. Okay. Well, what is the cause of this resentment? Somebody tell me. I, I can't hear you. Her. Why are you resenting your mate? Now, don't get shook out on me. Don't, don't just fall in the floor. Just face reality. Because every one of us in here has faced this. Is that not true? All right, let's check it out. How many has ever been hurt? Let's see your hand. Raise your hand. All right, if you don't raise your hand, we got this claw that's going to come down. <laughs> How many has resentment, has had it? Yeah. All right. If you don't deal with it, now, see, it, get, it goes into something else. You know what it'll go into? Now, you'll wreck, you'll wreck a lot of relationships even if you if you if you're going if you're really hurt, it'll come out in your relationship with your mate, with your children, people at work, wherever you're at, it will come out in your you can even see it in your face. I can detect things in people's face. How many of you know I'm the doctor? Been around a long time, had a lot of patients. Some of them died on me, but some of them lived. Every doctor faces that. Isn't that true? Some die, some live. So if you don't deal with that, resentment comes up. All this works against your nervous system. It works against your kidneys. It works against every part of your body. And then when you get about 55, you start falling apart. Liver trouble, heart problems, anxiety, worried about everything. If you don't have anything to worry about, you worry about that. I love, she, gets, she gets what I say. That's great. All right, resentment, resentment. Now, do you feel that you have any hurt right now? You don't have to raise your hand. You wouldn't tell me the truth anyway. Well, I don't blame you. Just keep your hurt and die early. <laughs> Watch your sense of humor, Bob. I'm trying. Do you have any resentment? Let's see. You probably resent me talking like this. <laughs> No, I didn't have any resentment until I came to that service. <laughs> Come on, love me now. This is real. This is, how many goes to the doctor and you want to hide your problem? Let's see. Huh? You're going to pay him. Well, you ain't going to find out what's wrong with me. I know it's my heart, but you ain't going to find out what's wrong with me. I'm not going to tell you. So they run you through all these tests, turn you upside down, drain all your blood out, run it through a machine, give you somebody else's blood that has some kind of other disease. <laughs> Is this not real? You go to the dentist. You're sitting in the dentist chair. That tells you right there you've got stomach trouble, right? <laughs> you've got teeth trouble. You want him to fix you up. We got to get in the church. Has got to grow up and say we want to. We want to solve these problems. How many people's in jail? Over a million people are in jail because they wouldn't face their problem. Their mother-in-law. <laughs> Moved in with them. 
Come on, I'm really, I'm really, listen, I'm real. I am real. Because how many, let me, let me give you a test here. How many in here, and you know you got termites in your house, and you say, boop, so what? How many would just go, boop, so what? How many would get a, somebody that knows how to get termites out of your house, and you'd, you'd phone up, and you'd have them come by and check it out? How many would do that? Let's see. How many would just forget it? It'll go away. I mean, I don't believe a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. One little termite. What will one little termite do? Yeah, that termite over there gets over here with this termite. Next thing you know, two, three, five thousand termites eating your house. And then you fall through the floor. Hello? Then you're sitting back there at Pastor Bob's office. Oh, me. Let's see. Let's go back 40 or 50 years now. You did everything wrong for 40 years. Now the, it's manifesting left and right. You've gone through 25 divorces. Half of the men died. <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> Woody, don't you laugh. All right, so, if it, so you don't deal with it. You don't deal with that one, and it goes to this. You're to, listen, you're talking about spiritual, we're talking about spiritual problems, and we're talking about mental problems, and we're talking about physical problems, we're talking about emotional problems, right there. And so what I'm trying to say with all the love in my heart, if you've got it, you've got to know how to deal with it. Now we're going to talk about that. All right, so you don't deal with it. This is what happens. Then it goes to... Gosh, I can't even get started here. The time goes by. From, resent, all right, from resentment to bitterness. That's close enough. Hebrew tells us what? What does Hebrew tell us? See to it that no root of bitterness spring up. Woo. Let me say that again. See to it that no root of bitterness spring up. If you know where that is, put it on the board. Can we see the board? I don't think we can see the board. I can't anyway. Everybody see the board now? Okay. All right, we're going to get back to that. All right, let's move real quick. Like, now, we have to see to it, and then that goes to uh, uh, hatred. Now you hate your dad, your mom. You hate everybody in the neighborhood. Goes to hatred. Hatred goes to, whoa, we don't know what this is. Rebellion. Rebellion. What's wrong with our society out there? Hmm? What's wrong with our society out there? But you trace it all the way back. Because they didn't know how to handle hurt. And it goes to something else, something else. The root of bitterness, hatred, rebellion, and then murder. It goes into murder. Hatred, it, same, almost the same thing as murder. Okay? Now, this is why you have to come to church and learn how to deal with this stuff, okay? Now, how many of you know forgiveness is a very powerful principle? You have to learn to forgive. When somebody hurts you, you forgive. All right, we're going to move on with the Scriptures. All right. Let's finish this. All right, <clears throat> then we'll come back to that. We who are strong in our convictions and our robust faith are to bear with the failings and the frailties and the tender scruples. Remember what we said scruples were? What did I say scruples were? Different opinions. Are you listening? Scruples is different opinions on certain things. 
In other words, opinion, this is wrong. Oh, I don't think that's wrong. This is right. No, I don't think that's right. So you got people saying, this is wrong, this is right, and they got different opinions. Don't fight over it. Just love one another. Everybody's got their opinion. You're born with it. Just like your nose. You're born with your nose. You're born with an opinion. Okay? So, you that are strong, he's talking to the strong Christians. Okay? So if you're strong, you have to bear. Everybody say bear. bear. You know, sometimes, may I say this to, to the husbands and wives, sometimes, and just about all the time, you just have to bear with one another. People come into this church, well, look at how they, they're not dressed like they should. They are dressed with moderation. You're a strong Christian, you just pray for them. I can see that they don't have a dress on. Don't worry about it. As they grow and they keep coming back, they'll find out that they need to wear some clothes. How many like to be a missionary in Africa? I'd like to send some folks there. Would you know how to handle that? Everybody sitting on the congregation, no top on. Women don't have no top. The men don't have no top. Would that bother me? Would that bother you? Some of you are not here. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know how to handle this type of teaching. But we deal with reality. Huh, they don't have a bra on. Huh. Where, when did the bras come into fashion? His, check that out. Check that out. That's your homework. Check it out. See, see. Uh, hey, listen to me. Our culture, our culture is different than other cultures. How many of you understand that? And you've got to recognize that our culture is different than other cultures, and they might not have been to our culture. But it takes a little while before they can get into the sanctification work of the Holy Spirit to clean them up on the inside. Hello? All right, I'm trying to teach you something. What was that scripture that I asked you to put up there? You remember now? <laughs> what was it? Somebody tell me. Huh? Yeah, Romans 15.1. Go to number two. Then we'll get back to this. Number two. He's working on it? Yeah. All right. Well, until he finds it. Now, this is the order that it goes. I would like to ask this question, and I think I will, because we've got to learn. Has anybody ever had bitterness? All right, you're honest. Do you have it now? Good. Hatred. Hatred. Oh, you've had, see how it moves, and you, now you, you hate. Rebellion. Come on. Listen, we all came from the same, what? Stump. And what's the name of the stump? Adam. Now, I, I've, been, I've been talking good news to you now, and I'm trying to move you back to maybe you can identify your problem. Now, wives, if your husband doesn't do what you want him to do, which one of these that uh, you think you would come into real quick like? Huh? Murder? Number one, you'd be hurt. All right, and that's natural because we're all human. You, you, you get hurt. But do you know how to handle that hurt? That's what I was coming to. All right, go to um, 1 Peter 3, 8, and 9. That's what I want. 1 Peter, got it? Good. He's working on it. <clears throat> sure. How many have kids in here and they hurt you? They don't mean to a lot of times. We don't mean to hurt each other a lot of times. A lot of times, you know, in the, I had somebody stand up in church and said, 
I forgive you, Pastor Bob. And I said, thank you so much. And I thought, what did I do? <laughs> Probably what did I didn't do. You know, it's not always what you do, it's what you don't do. But see, I took it graciously, and I wondered, for this day, what did I do? I don't know. Maybe I looked at him wrong, or I didn't hug him like he thought I should have. I don't know. But I'm glad that he forgave, not for me, but for who? For his sake. Now listen, for his sake, okay? All right? <clears throat> First Peter 3, um, 8 and 9. He's going to find that. All right. Let's move on real quick. Now, remember forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now, I said something a while ago. <clears throat> People were going to come in here with all kind of opinions. They don't understand us raising our ha hands. They don't understand us worshiping God a long time like we do. They come from a traditional church. Three songs, sit down. Don't move. Only when the offering comes by, grab your pocketbook. Empty it in, your, in the plate, put it back, and don't move no more till you are dismissed. Got it? Well, we're jumping all over the place around here, praising God, worshiping God. We're free. We love God. Hallelujah. We've got, we got God's cleanness. Hey, we all have had all of this. God's cleansed me of all of this. I'm sitting at the table. <laughs> Susan gave my brother, my son-in-law a bigger piece of chicken than me. I skipped that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, huh? 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 This might not be funny to some of you, but it's real. You can, you can, it's so easy to resent. Some of you may be resenting me so bad talking about this. Because it's too close to home. I'm serious. But I love you enough. Because, see, this is your Heavenly Father alerting you. If you don't know how to overcome this, you're not going to be successful in your life. You're not even going to know how to walk in the Spirit. You're not even going to know how to love people. Because you're so full. I, and I, listen, I've dealt with hundreds of people that's been full, just so full, I know exactly what to look for. And I have to untangle them. And sometimes it takes months, months. All right, here we go. Uh, go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and then 9. Here we are. Finally, all of you should be mad at one another. What does it say? Read that for me. Fin say, everybody say, finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous and tenderhearted and humble. And if you're not, here you are. That's the cure. That's the cure for this. Do we see that? It's so simple. Pastor Bob, did you hear how that guy talked to you? Yes. Aren't you hurt? No. Aren't you mad at him? No, I love him. I love him. I'm going to take him out for dinner. Hello? Overcome what? Evil with what? Good. All right, next verse then. Let's see if I'm right. Never always return evil for evil. Never. Why? Why? Never return evil for evil. Why? See, if you know the Word of God, if you know anything about life, what you sow, you what? Reap. I don't care. Oh, I love Jesus, and I'm so glad. But, brother, you cannot trespass eternal laws. Mm. 
Abends mal nein, meine Freunde kommen mit Tilton. <lacht> See, that has got to get in our brain. Hot stove. Aha, hot stove. Touch hot stove. Hot stove burn. Everybody agree? Hot stove burn. Simple, not complicated. You know what he done to me? He said I was a bald-headed critter. Can you imagine that? He hurt my feelings. I'm going to burn his peas and his beans. I'm going to write him a mean letter. Boy, I have gotten letters in my bail box. Move on, Bob. Okay, I believe it will. All right, never, never, never. Why? Why? Because that's touching the hot stove. If you do, if somebody does evil to you and you do it evil back to you, you're going to reap that evil. What you sow, you sow okra, what do you get? Who said butter beans? No, you sow okra, you get okra. You sow corn, you get corn. You sow evil, you get evil. These principles work in the natural, they work in the spiritual realm. That's why when people come in here, they don't know how to live the Christian life. They got two guns on them. If that preacher says anything I don't like, he's a dead man. I'll write him a letter and I'll burn his hair off his head. <laughs> All right, y'all behave yourself. No, no, look, or insult for insult. Scolding, tongue lashing, berating. But on the contrary, spit in their face. That will teach them to mess with you. That's the world's thinking. You drop atomic bomb on me, you're going to get one back. Is that not true? All right? And people want to know what, 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 what's wrong with my marriage. Huh. They, don't need, they don't want me to counsel with them. If they do, they'll get free, I'll tell you that. But they, they got, you got any of that tape up there? Just throw it down here when you get a chance. We'll, 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 put a, we'll give them a little tape. Okay. All right, let's go stay out of trouble, Bob. Okay. All right, listen. Praying for their welfare and happiness, protection, and truly pitying and loving them, and loving them. Are we so, can I preach? Are we so insecure in our relationship with one another and God? I remember when Susan B. first started communicating. I had this big inch uh, steel shield that I put, I was on this side of, and she was on that side. Well, she'd mess her fist up when you hit that thing. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Don't sit there and tell me it ain't a big deal when you start, minute, start communicating with your mate. Oh, it's joint bumps. Joy bumps my, I mean, why did I open this keg of worms? Come on now, love me just a little bit. Is that not true? Because the misunderstanding. Oh, you don't love me. Yes, I do, honey. But don't put your chewing gum into bed anymore. I mean, it sticks to me, and I don't like the chewing gum on the bed. You don't love me no more. I love you, but don't put your... Chewing gum in the bed. You don't love me. If you did, you love me. Put my chewing gum in your bed. <laughs> Come on, love me. Well, if you'll take your tobacco and quit spitting in my shoe, I might do this. <laughs> Come on, church, love me. But see, we ain't fighting over nothing. You can't even remember what you was fighting a year ago. Burnt toast. Come on, church, love me a little bit. All right, listen, that, this is God's Word. This is His instructions. Loving them, 
For note that to this you have been called. Wow, what have I been called for? Oh Lord, what have I been called for? Blessing people, praying for people, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I bless you. 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 Thirteen blessings will come in the mail next week. Hundred dollars from so and so. Yeah. Count your blessings one by one. We'll take one little stupid thing and destroy our relationship, and what difference will it matter throughout eternity anyway? Is that not true in many cases? Now, there are certain situations that need to be settled, but the most people that I know, it's just little things that don't mean nothing. All right, listen. That you may yourself inherit a blessing from God, that you may attain a blessing as heirs, bring in welfare and happiness and protection to yourself and to them. Now, the next time somebody runs in front of you, you're driving down the road. Here comes Pastor Bob. <laughs> oh, it's Pastor Bob. Hey, Pastor Bob. Bless you, son. My next door neighbor. Did you know that when you curse them, you're cursing yourself? Come on now, I'm trying to help you. See, what we're talking about is keeping all these curses off of us and getting the blessings of God, but we've got to sow blessings to get blessings. If you, how many likes watermelon? If you want watermelon, you're going to plant what? Squash? You're going to plant watermelon. You want blessings? You plant blessings. You want curses? Plant the curses. Just keep on. I wonder why this is happening to me. Check what you're saying. Check how you look at people. Are you judging them? Are you just putting them down? Do you want to investigate what they're doing uh, when they're not around you? Are you a busybody? I wonder what he's doing over there by... Uh, hmm. Come on, church. Bob, you're stepping on my toes, but I love you. You know I love you. Is that not true? I don't want to know what they're doing. Don't tell me what they're doing. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to pray for them. Because if I want to know anything, I will know by the Spirit. See, I don't deal in the natural. Once you grow up in Christ, you deal in the spiritual realm. You don't deal down here where the devil is. You deal up here where the Spirit is. You're in the Spirit. And therefore you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because all of this comes from the old stump. Old Adam. And old Adam died at Calvary with Jesus Christ. And when he died, all of that stuff died, and I reckon myself to be dead indeed unto all of that, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord, and I do not yield my members as instruments of unrighteousness, but I yield them as instruments of righteousness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, knowing this, that my old man that produces this, that was weak, <laughs> that produces that, died at Calvary. It's done. It's finished. I accept it by faith. Everything is by faith. And I'm free from that garbage. And I bless my wife. I bless my husband. I bless the Pastor Bob. I bless everybody. And you are blessed. You get what you sow. All right. Woo! Now, let's, I want to go ahead and preach my message I wanted to preach. Ooh, boy. Turn, if you will, real quick, like, and we're dealing with certain things now. 
Remember, we were dealing with some of our sins. Uh, let's look at uh, Acts, uh, yeah, Acts 19, real quick, like Acts 19 on the board. Uh, let's see what verse now. <coughs> when people come in here, they have probably been entangled with just about everything you can imagine, okay? Uh, Acts 19, 19. Up on the board. Are you ready? Look at it. And many of those who had practiced curious magical arts collected their books, throwing them book after book on the pile, burnt them in the sight of everybody. When they counted the value of them, they found it uh, amounted to about 50,000 pieces of silver, about 9,300. Now, a lot of people don't know that, that many things that they're touching out there, like Ouija boards, how many of you know Ouija board is not from heaven? How many has ever played with Ouija boards? I did when I was young. How many knows what a Ouija board is? All right. You put your, got these little things like this. You put your fingers on it and it starts moving. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're spelling out words and all. That's the demonic powers, evil spirits causing that. Uh... There's a book that uh, a lot of people read. And somebody tell me what that book is. Harry Potter. Huh? Harry Potter. What? Potter. Harry. What's the name of it? Harry. Harry. Oh, Brother Harry. I forgot about him. Yeah, Brother Harry. <laughs> Harry Potter. How many of you, that's not from heaven. And you've got to watch your kids. You've been reading Harry Potter? Oh, no, Mama. What was your light on last night for? Oh, I had to get up and... Lie? Do you lie, son? No, I don't lie. Then the next day you see this Potter book underneath his blanket. What do you do? How many people are going to be involved in Halloween? Don't raise your hand. I don't want to see it. Stay home with your kids. Have your candy and your little tracks. The kids just love to give out those tracks. Now, I listen, look at me. I'm married. Susan's married. We've been married 60 years. We had to raise our kids, and we started out in the Christian faith practicing everything. I did, anyway. Halloween, yay, Halloween. Good old Halloween. Boo, I got you. Then later on, I realized, oh, my goodness. I read the Bible, and these people that got saved, if you read that whole chapter, you find out that they were involved in the occult. How many of you know that the occult is a rising thing? Worship, Satan worship. This is all programming people for the Antichrist, okay? Now, I know this is new knowledge to some of you. Just put it on your shelf. If you keep walking with God, you'll see this old boy knows what he's talking about. I'm just not up here spitting out words to spit out words. I've studied this thing for 50-some years. You know, we all understand that? Okay, so I'm just not, you know, well, I'll find this and give it to No, I've, I've dealt with people that's been in the occult. I've cast demons out of them because they open themselves up to demonic powers. And what will happen is you will lose your interest in God. That influence of the occult is so powerful, you won't want to go to church no more. That's one manifestation. You won't want to read your Bible no more. You are more interested in the carnal world than you are the spirit world. And all of a sudden, whatever happened to brother so-and-so? I can tell you, very simple. I know exactly what happened. And it's so sad. Destroyed the whole family. So, when God began to show Susan and me this, we began to clean our house out. And I found a little Buddha statue. Now, it's the spirit behind that image is what is going to give you a hard time. Will you understand that? How many really believe that there are demon spirits? Let's see your hands. Okay, you bet you they are. I've gone into houses where these, the cabinets would open up and slam. 
Bob, well, I don't understand what's going on here. I mean, what are you talking about? My, the, in my cabin is, I hear them at nighttime, open up, slam, open up, slam. Demonic powers. When you move into a fresh house, you better pray over it, sp sprinkle the blood over it, because you don't know what they practice in that house before you moved into it, okay? And I, we've had to go to people's houses and, and deal with those issues. Now, when you read the book, when you read Acts 19, we don't have much time, got four more minutes, but I want you to read that and get the gist of that because I don't have all that time. But that's dealing with spiritual warfare. And these demons, I mean, they, they are something else, and they will hinder you from growing. They will, they will actually drain your interests totally out of you, and your love for God will co draw coal. That's how serious it is. There's an, uh, let me say this. There's an influence in the world. How many know there's an influence in the world? Let me see your hands. I don't know how. Well, good, y'all people. Are, that's great. I'm glad to say That influence, if you're not, will suck you right in. Is that not true? <coughs> Everything is not sin. But I'm saying there's a spirit of the world. He that loveth the world does not love God. We ain't got time to go into that. But check your house out for any uh, demonic, occult things that may be in your house that you don't know about, or your kid or somebody lives in your house with you might have brought them in. That's very important. What you got? You also have to be careful going to yard sales and stuff and purchasing things because there's spiritual things attached to some things that you buy from yard sales. That's true. That's true. All right, let me say this. I, I was dealing with this one guy years ago. He was, anger was so strong in his life. I mean, his wife said, Bob, what is wrong with my husband? I know he loves me. He is angry about everything. Man, it's awful. So I said, well, come and have him to talk with me. So he, he talked with me, and I said, uh, what do you read a lot of? He said, well, I read a lot of these um, war books, like in World War II about Hitler. How many of you know Hitler was an occult person? Hitler, well, you study about Hitler, World War II, he, he's the one that killed, had six uh, million Jews slaughtered and on, on and on and on. But he was so involved in reading all of these magazines about World War II. I said, well, how many books do you have? He said, well, I got box up, boxes of them. Boxes? I said, you want to be delivered? He said, yeah. I, I know I'm, I, this, this is going to destroy my marriage, I know, in my life. I said, well, you pack it all up, put it in boxes, and bring it here. That's when we lived on Meadow Cliff Avenue, and I always had a pit in the back. I said, we'll burn them. So I think it was uh, two or three days after that, he came over. The whole back of his car was filled with boxes. His trunk was filled with boxes of all of these World War II pictures in these magazines. So we got them all unloaded, took them in the backyard, and one by one we burnt box after box. Must took, must took six and a half hours to burn it, and every, he got freer and freer and freer, and we burnt the last book, and he, he just got free. Okay? Now that's a story, and he became a man of God, and when we were, he, he moved to Ohio years ago, and when we were building this building back here, he was so graceful, great, great, thankful of God using me to set him free that he sent $10,000 to help us build that building. So these things, they're things, but the devil uses them to infiltrate God's people. So what do you have? One more story, and I'll let you go. This guy actually came to the church, and he looked like an owl. And I said, boy, he looks just like an owl, you know. So I went to his house. He had all of these pictures of owls and statues of owls. And I had to say, brother, can I? I'm probably going to say something that you'll probably throw me out your house. But I said, you need deliverance. What do you mean? Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? <laughs> Now, that, it, is, it ain't funny, but it is funny. And so I told him about the occult. I told him about the power that, that 
certain things represent certain spirits in the, in, the, in the spirit world. Do we understand that? And these spirits flow through these objects to penetrate your life and to influence your life, okay? And so I shared all that with him. We got into the scriptures. And, and by the way, we've got, uh, we've got books. If you need some teaching on this, uh, a book that Frank put out, A Warrior's Heart, you ought to get that, but it, cause it, it shows you how to, to pray these prayers to break these powers of darkness. So get, get one of these books and check it out. Sometimes you don't know what's causing your marriage to, to fall apart. But the enemy, listen, hates God and hates you. Yeah, we got some of them back there. And they're going to do everything they can to destroy your life and to, and to have your old man fester up and you walk in the flesh and not the spirit. We're fighting a real battle. And Paul says, I have fought the good fight of faith. And it is a fight. I've been in this thing for a long time. And you can't let your guard down one time. You've got to be strong, courageous, and know the Lord is with you. But you've got to keep all this stuff out. Along the way, your kids might bring some of this stuff in. And you're going to have to watch and see what's going on in your house. Because, see, they don't know. But you'll see their personalities change. You'll see that they won't have any interest at all in the things of God anymore. I'm telling you the truth. So you have to do a certain amount of warfare. Warfare. What you got, Yolanda? Just a minute. Where's my thing at here? Come on up. But anyway, this guy, when he got free, I mean, it, his whole personality changed. And, he, and, this, and listen, somehow you have to burn some of this stuff, just like up there. I had three pictures in our house on Middlecliff Avenue. It came from Lund uh, England. I had to burn. I found that little Buddha in the house. So clean your house from everything. What you got? Um. We had a Sunday school lesson some years ago that said, um, you are responsible for what you say as well as what you don't say. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if you see something going wrong or you see somebody going in the wrong direction and God places it in your heart, you need to talk to that person. You need to ask God to give you what you need to say and say it because if you hold on to it and something happens to that person, mm -hmm. their blood is on your hands. That's right. You wouldn't actually be riding in the car with somebody and then just, okay, you see, you, in your mind you're saying, okay, you see that pole back there, right? I know they see that pole. I know they see don't look like they see that pole. Are you going to just sit there and say, oh, right. my goodness. Well, when are they going to stop? Or are you going to say, hey, do you see that? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're you putting your hands, your life in their hands mm -hmm. either way, spiritually and physically. You know, mm -hmm. so you are responsible. You are your brother's keeper. Yeah. You know, you got to prefer to do what the word of God says yeah. over preserving yourself or like, well, oh, that person is going to be angry yeah. with me or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to get to the place that we mature enough to walk out the word of God yeah. and not be focused on yeah. what it's going to do to us or how that person is going to re react towards us. Because if you put on the armor of God, it's just like oil. Mm -hmm. What sticks to oil? Holy Spirit. What sticks to oil? So their emotion, their negative attitude, their negative emotion, is it going to stick to you? Mm. No. You got the armor on. It's just like Pam. You know what Pam yeah, is, right, yeah. the non-stick spray? Spray it on yourself every day. And then you won't be concerned about, oh, this person got a bad attitude towards me or that person is snippy. You'll see what you need to do is pray. Mm -hmm. Pray for that person and keep it moving. You're not, okay, the attitude, the hurt, the resentment, the bitterness, the anger, it's not sticking to you because you put on your armor. Yeah, better have your armor. And let me say this too. 
That, that's, that, that is being our brother's keeper. But be led by the Holy Spirit. There's sometimes I don't say things to people because they're not mature enough and I could do more harm at that point. Now, if I see they got a gun up in their head, I mean, I'm going to tell them real quick. You know, that can kill you real quick. But how many know you've got to have wisdom in all of this? See, I could point things out in all of your lives. I can see things. But I preach and hope that you are seeing by my teaching and preaching that you can identify it in your own life. Now, if you don't know what to do with it, if you don't know how to handle it, that's why we have Sunday school. These guys are coming to Sunday school now. Any problem that they have, all they got to do is tell us, and we will work on it together. We will teach the Word. I'll open the Word of God, and they can see it in the Word of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not here to condemn. Man, I see great potential in these young men. Great potential. And, I'm, and I want to be used by God to help the, that potential to come forth. He's singing now already. He's back there cutting grass out there now. He's going to be singing pretty soon. You're going to, he's going to be singing pretty soon. So good, these are the soul winners here. These are soul winners. That man can sing, brother. Yeah, well, we're going to find out and give him a chance. Can I sing with you? No, we won't go. I, I just kidding. Oh, man. So, so we need a whole new understanding of coming to church and what it's all about. It's not just sitting in the seat. And that ain't too bad. I think these are pretty comfortable seats. But if you got a problem, and you're back there, uh, the women constantly tell me that the problems they had, that Missy does a good job in helping them to speak up. What is your problem, you know? Because how many of you know you got to deal with it? The issues that you do not deal with will destroy your future. Not only your future, your kids, the church, God's kingdom. None of us is an island. None of us is more righteous than the other. We're all righteous. I've been trying to establish that in your life. But there is another area in our lives called the old man. Yet Jesus dealt with the old man, but you've got to know how to present him to the cross where that stuff will not dominate and control. How much, if you've got kids, how much of your kids have that? How many of you know, if you don't deal with it in your children, they're going to grow up and they're going to get married? Sister Sue over there has got all of this. Brother John over there has got all of that. And we're going to tie a knot and tie them together. Huh? You ever seen two cats tied their tails, tails tied together? Come on, sure, love me a little bit. Huh? Huh? Listen, start praying for one another. That's a good start. Pray for one another. Share with one another. Don't point the finger. I told you, you did it again. I'm going to tell Pastor Bob on you. Please don't already know it. 